Ezekiel 16, the word of Hashem came to me, saying, Son of man, inform Jerusalem of her abominations. Say, Thus said the Lord Hashem Elohim to Jerusalem, Your dwelling place and your birthplace are of the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. And as for your birth, on the day you were born, your umbilical cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to smooth your skin, nor were you salted, nor were you swaddled. No eye pitied you to do any of these things for you, to show you compassion. You were cast out upon the open field because of the loathsomeness of your being. On the day you were born, then I passed you and saw you wallowing in your blood. I said to you, in your blood you shall live. In your blood you shall live. I made you as numerous as the plants of the field. You increased and grew, and you came to have a great charm. Breasts developed and your hair sprouted, but you were naked and bare. I passed by you and saw you, and behold, your time was the time of love. And I spread the hems of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. And I swore to you and entered into a covenant with you, the word of the Lord Hashem Elohim, and you became mine. I bathed you with water and washed away your blood from upon you, and I anointed you with oil. I clothed you in embroidered garments. I shod you in tashash leather. I bound you with linen. I covered you with silk. I decked you with ornaments. I put bracelets on your hands and a necklace on your neck. And I placed a ring on your nose, earrings on your ears and a crown of beauty on your head. You decked yourself with gold and silver, and your garments were linen, silk, and embroidery. You ate fine flour, honey, and oil. You became exceedingly beautiful, and you became fit for royalty. Your fame went forth among the nations for your beauty, for it was perfect through my splendor that I placed upon you. The word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. But you trusted in your beauty, and you became licentious because of your fame. You poured forth your harlotries upon every passerby to be his. So you took of your garments and made for yourself harlequin platforms, and were licentious upon them. This should not have been and shall not occur. Then you took your beautiful objects from my gold and my silver that I gave you, and made for yourself male images and were licentious with them. You took your embroidered garments and covered them, and my oil and my incense you placed before them. My bread that I gave you, I had fed you fine flour, oil, and honey. You placed before them for satisfying aroma, and so it was. The word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. Then you took your sons and your daughters whom you begot for me, and these you slaughtered for them to devour. Was your harlotry so trivial that you slew my children and gave them away by passing them over before your idols? And with all your abominations and your harlotries, you did not remember the days of your youth, when you were naked and bare, when you were wallowing in your blood. And now, after all your wickedness, Woe, woe unto you, the word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. You built for yourself an eminent place and made for yourself a lofty place in every street. At every crossroad, you built your lofty place. You profaned your beauty and opened your legs to every passerby. And you multiplied your harlotries. You were licentious with the sons of Egypt, your neighbors, great of flesh. And you multiplied your harlotry to provoke me. Then, behold, I stretched out my hand against you and diminished your allotment. Then I delivered you to the whim of those who hate you, the daughters of the Philistines, who were ashamed of your lewd way. You were licentious with the sons of Assyria because you were not sated. You were licentious with them, yet you were still not sated. 
Then you multiplied your harlotry toward the land of the merchants, toward Chaldea. But even with this, you were not sated. How degenerate is your heart, the word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. When you do all these things, the deed of an adulterous, compulsive woman, when you build your eminent place at every crossroad and make your lofty place in every street, you were not like a harlot who brags about her fee. O oh, adulterous wife, who takes strangers in place of her husband. To all other harlots gifts are given, but you, you have given your gifts to all your paramours and bribed them to come to you from all around with your harlotries. So with you, it was the opposite of other women in your harlotries. And after you will never be such harlotry in that you gave a fee and a fee was not given to you. Thus have you become the opposite. Therefore, O harlot, hear the word of Hashem. Thus said the Lord Hashem Elohim. Because your shame was poured out and your nakedness was uncovered by all your harlotries with your paramours, and because of all your abominable idols, and in accordance with the blood of your children whom you gave to them, therefore, behold, I will gather all your paramours to whom you have been pleasant and all whom you love, together with all whom you hate. I will gather them to you from all around and uncover your nakedness to them, and they will see all your nakedness. I will administer upon you the judgments of adulteresses and spillers of blood, and deliver you to the blood of wrath and jealousy. Then I will place you in their hand. They will tear down your eminent place and smash your lofty places. They will strip you of your clothes and take your beautiful vessels and leave you naked and bare. They will bring up an assemblage against you. They will pelt you with stone and pierce you with their swords. They will burn down your houses in fire. And they will execute judgments against you before the eyes of many women. I will stop you from being a harlot. And you will never more pay a fee. Then I will relieve my fury that had been upon you, and my jealousy will turn away from you. Then I will be at rest and not be angry anymore. This will befall you because you did not remember the days of your youth, but have angered me with all these things. So, behold, I will also place your way upon your head, the word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. But you did not consider this, considering all your abominations. Behold, all those who speak in parables will use this parable about you, saying, Like mother, so her daughter. You are your mother's daughter, spewing forth her husband and her children. You are your sister's sister, who spewed forth their husbands and children, as if your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. Your bigger sister is Samaria, she and her daughters, who dwell to your north. And your sister who is younger than you who dwells to your south is Sodom and its daughters. If only you had gone in their ways and acted like their abominations, it would have been a small trifle. But you were even more corrupt than they in all your ways. As I live, the word of the Lord Hashem Elohim, I swear that Sodom, your sister, she and her daughters have not done as you and your daughters did. Behold, this was the sin of Sodom, your sister. She and her daughters had pride, surplus of bread, and peaceful serenity. But she did not strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. And they were haughty, and they committed an abomination before me. So I removed them in accordance with what I saw. And as for Samaria, she did not sin even half of your sins. For you have increased your abominations beyond them. You have vindicated your sisters with all your abominations that you have committed. Now you too bear your humiliation that you had judged appropriate for your sister through your sins by which you acted more abominably than they. They are more righteous than you. You too feel ashamed and bear your humiliation as you vindicate your sisters. And I will return their captivity, the captivity of Sodom and her daughters, and the captivity of Samaria and her daughters. And the captivity of your captives will be in their midst, so that you bear your humiliation and be humiliated for all you have done by comforting them. And your sisters, 
Sodom and her daughters will return to their former state, and Samaria and her daughters will return to their former state, and you and your daughters will return to your former state. Was not your sister Sodom a saying in your mouth, in your day of pride, before your wickedness was revealed, as at the time of the disgrace of the daughters of Aram and all who are around her, and all the daughters of the Philistines who demean you from all around? You have borne your scheming and your abominations, the word of Hashem. For thus said the Lord Hashem Elohim, I will do to you as you have done, for you have scorned an oath, breaking our covenant. But I will remember my covenant made with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish for you an everlasting covenant. Then you will remember your evil ways and be humiliated. When you take your sisters who are older than you with those who are younger than you, and I give them to you as daughters, but not because you kept your covenant, then I will establish my covenant with you, and you will know that I am Hashem, in order that you remember and be ashamed, so that you no longer have an excuse because of your humiliation, when I forgive you for all that you have done. The word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. Ezekiel 17, the word of Hashem came to me saying, Son of man, propose a riddle and relate a parable to the house of Israel. You shall say, Thus said the Lord Hashem Elohim, the great eagle, great of wings and long of pinion, full of plumage, which has many colors, came to the Lebanon and took the crown of the cedar. He cropped the top of the young twigs and brought it to the land of the merchants, placing it in the city of traders. He then took from the seed of the land and placed it in a fertile field. He took it to a place of abundant waters. He set it up to be as lush as a mountain willow. It sprouted and became a spreading vine, low of stature, with its tendrils turned inward with its roots underneath it. It became a vine and produced branches and set out bows. There was another great eagle, great of wings and abundant of plumage, and behold, this vine's roots yearned toward him, and it extended its tendrils toward him from the furrows of its bed, that he should water it, though it had been planted in a fertile field by abundant waters, to produce branches and bear fruit to become a stately vine. Say, Thus said the Lord Hashem Elohim, Shall it prosper? Will the first eagle not tear out its roots and cut off its fruit so that it will wither and all its sprouting leaves wither? And no great arm nor multitude of people can prevent its being wiped out by the roots. Behold, it had been firmly planted. Can it prosper? When the east wind touches it, will it not completely wither? In the very furrows of its sprouting, it will wither. The word of Hashem came to me, saying, Say now to the rebellious house, Do you not know what this parable represents? Say, Behold, the king of Babylonia came to Jerusalem, and he took its king and princes and brought them to him to Babylonia. Then he took someone from the royal seed and sealed a covenant with him, and had him take an oath. And he took away the mighty of the land, so that it would be a lowly kingdom, that it could not rise up, and so that it should keep his covenant, that it might not endure. But he rebelled against him, sending his agents to Egypt to provide them with horses and great multitude. Shall one who does such things succeed? Shall he escape? Shall he annul a covenant and escape? As I live, the word of the Lord Hashem Elohim, I swear that at the place of the king who installed him, whose oath he spurned and whose covenant he broke, with him, in the midst of Babylonia, he shall die. And Pharaoh will not aid him in war with a large army or a great assembly, when ramps are poured and siege towers built to cut down numerous lives. And as for the one who spurned an oath to annul his covenant, behold, he has given his hand, yet he did all of these things. He shall not escape. Therefore, thus said the Lord Hashem Elohim, as I live, I swear that I shall place on his head the punishment for my oath that he has spurned and my covenant that he has broken. I will spread my net over him and he will be caught in my trap. 
I will bring him to Babylonia, and I will contend with him there for his treachery that he has committed against me. And all his fugitives together with all his officers will fall by the sword, and the remaining ones will spread out in every direction. Then you will know that I, Hashem, have spoken. Thus said the Lord Hashem Elohim, Then I will take you from the crown of the lofty cedar and establish it. From the head of the young twigs I will crop a tender one and plant it on a high and eminent mountain. I will plant it on the mountain of the highest of Israel, and it will bear branches and produce fruit and become a stately cedar. And every bird of every kind of wing will dwell under it. They will dwell in the shade of its tendrils. And all the trees of the field will know that I, Hashem, have lowered a high tree and have raised a low tree. I have dried up a moist tree and made blossom a dry tree. I am Hashem. I have spoken and I shall carry it out. Ezekiel 18. The word of Hashem came to me saying, Why do you relate this parable upon the land of Israel? Saying, the fathers eat sour grapes, but the teeth of the sons are set on edge. As I live, the word of the Lord Hashem Elohim, I swear that there will no longer be anyone among you who uses this parable in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. Like the soul of the father, so the soul of the son. They are mine. The soul that sins, it shall die. If a man is righteous and practices justice and righteousness... He does not partake of idolatrous sacrifice upon the mountains. He does not lift his eye toward the idols of the house of Israel. Does not defile his neighbor's wife, nor approach an impure woman. Does not oppress any man. Returns a collateral for a debt. Does not rob any loot. Gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with clothing. Does not give loans with usury, nor take interest. Withholds his hand from corruption executes true justice between man and man, goes according to my decrees and observes my ordinances to practice truth. He is a righteous man. He shall surely survive. He shall surely live. The word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. If he begets a violent son who sheds blood, who does any of these sins to his brother, who does not do all of these good deeds... For he even partakes of idolatrous sacrifices upon the mountains, defiles his neighbor's wife, oppresses the poor and the destitute, robs loot, does not return collateral, lifts his eye toward the idols, commits abomination, gives loans with usury and takes interest. Should he live? He shall not live. He has committed all these abominations. He shall surely die, and his blood will be upon himself. Then, if he begets a son who sees all the sins of his father that he had done, he sees, but does not act like them. He does not partake of idolatrous sacrifices upon the mountains, does not lift his eyes toward the idols of the house of Israel, does not defile his neighbor's wife, does not oppress any man, does not keep collateral, does not rob any loot, gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with clothing, withholds his hand from harming the poor, does not take usury or interest, obeys my ordinances, and follows my decrees. He shall not die for his father's iniquity. He shall surely live. His father, because he has cruelly oppressed others, has robbed loot from his brother and did that, which is not good among his people. Behold, he died for his sin. Yet you say, Why did the son not bear the iniquity of the father? Because the Son performed justice and righteousness and observed all my decrees and performed them, he should surely live. The soul that sins, it shall die. A son shall not bear the iniquity of his father, and a father shall not bear the iniquity of his son. The righteousness of the righteous person shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked person shall be upon him. As for the wicked man, if he repents from all his sins that he committed, and he observes all my decrees and practices justice and righteousness, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he committed will not be remembered against him. He shall live because of the righteousness that he did. 
Do I desire at all the death of the wicked man? The word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. Is it not rather his return from his wicked ways that he might live? And when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and practices corruption, shall he do like all the abominations that the wicked man did and live? All his righteousness that he had done will not be remembered because of his treachery with which he betrayed and because of his sin that he sinned. Because of them he shall die. And if you say, The way of my Lord is not proper. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is my way not proper? Surely it is your ways that are not proper. When the righteous man turns away from his righteousness and practices corruption, he shall die for them. For the corruption that he practiced, he shall die. And if the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he did and performs justice and righteousness... He will cause his soul to live because he contemplated and repented from all his transgressions that he did. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of my Lord is not proper. Are my ways not proper, O house of Israel? Surely it is your ways that are not proper. Therefore I will judge you, each man according to his ways, O house of Israel. The word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. Return and bring others back from all your transgressions, so that they not be for you an obstacle of iniquity. Cast off from upon yourselves all your transgressions through which you have transgressed, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, O house of Israel? For I do not desire the death of the one who should die. The word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. Turn yourselves back and live.